Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm going to do something just a little bit different today. I'm going to do Hisako story mode in Killer Instinct. I don't really get into fighting game stories very often, but I figured a little bit of a shake-up would be nice, and some of you might actually dig this, so... Why don't we just jump into this? Five hundred years ago, a village in Japan was attacked by bandits. A girl took up her dying father's naginata to defend the town. Her bravery inspired her people and saved the village. The girl, however, perished. But she did not leave. Today, her shrine has become a revered place. The locals say her spirit walks through the village, protecting them still. Her real name forgotten. They now call her Hisako, the Eternal Child. Arya wished to study life after death, what it is that makes the human spirit linger long after it should leave. Word reaches her of a spirit that haunts a Japanese village, and she arranges to have the village desecrated to draw the spirit out. Sadira's attack pulls Hisako into the realm of the living. Her spirit is tied to this place, and no one who befouls it will live. So, this is the first canonical story fight for Hisako against Sadira, who Arya, the Ultratech CEO, has sent to defile Hisako's village and scout out this powerful spirit she's been hearing about. And appropriately, we're in the Village of Whispers, which is Hisako's stage. Eh, she's blocking a little bit. <laughs> Not too much to say about it. This is how all the fights are gonna go. It's more or less a vanilla fighting game story mode. There aren't a lot of bells and whistles here. It's just kind of like the old school style arcade mode story modes. So, aside from the City Era fight, just so you can see kind of the gist of it, it's a very basic CPU fight. Uh, I'm going to be cutting out most of the fights. I think there are, what is it, six or seven uh, before Arya. I guess I'll leave Arya in as well. Because otherwise, you're just going to be watching a lot of this. The same thing over and over. Just very, very basic, easy CPU stomps with occasional CPU blocking. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Alright, next up, I want to say it's Fulgor or Riptor. Her home desecrated by Ultratech, Hisako is compelled out of her dominion to hunt the Defilers. Oh yeah, and her next opponent is indeed Riptor, so I'm gonna enjoy this. A Sokka Riptor matchup that's actually skewed in my favor. This is traditionally not a great matchup, but against the CPU, yeah, I get to just beat on the Raptor. And if you're wondering what Riptor's association with Ultratech is, uh, she is cybernetically enhanced by them. Supreme victory. 
Hisako feels her power wane with each fight. She must complete her mission quickly before she is pulled back into the beyond. So this kind of mid-arc here is her fighting powerful spiritual warriors to regain a little bit of that power. Which is why I think this fight exists against Thunder. Yeah. Very loose contrivance just to add more fights. Looks like we have Saber Wolf next. The warrior's spiritual energy replenishes Hisako. She begins hunting creatures with spiritual and supernatural powers to buy herself more time. Maya the Hunter is on a mission of her own, but is bound by duty to stop any that haunt this world from beyond the terrestrial realm. Hisako's grip on this world grows thin and time is running out. She must find another being to restore her. So another one of these. This one's against Spinal and this, I don't know, power level tier wise? This seems like it should be a bit of a mismatch. Because Spinal is a god. He's some Viking culture's god. <laughs> Wishing to test the strength of the spirit, Arya sends her best agent after Hisako, and that best agent is Cinder. Again, this defies some of my power level ranking expectations. Cinder is the top Ultratech agent. The soul of a human. Arya wonders how something can be so powerful and so fragile. How some that might seem weak can overcome, and yet those who could be the strongest fall into shadow. Whatever this power is that drags Hisako forward, that pulls her inch by inch beyond death's grasp, is what separates the weak from the strong. Arya contemplates the applications of such a power and how she will control it. Thank you. 
Ari is impressed with Hisako's resolve and awaits her arrival at the pinnacle, setting a trap to capture the spirit. I don't know what this trap is, aside from, hey, I'm confronting you, I'm a final boss. Her AI is marginally more difficult than the others in that she'll mix up the strength of her combo, she, so she's slightly harder to break, and I guess she makes the blocks a little bit more. But, I don't know, it would be cool if there were some mutators or modifiers or something. Or like, Hisaka was weakened and she doesn't get to build Wrath for this. I don't know, something that furthers the narrative of the trap. I'm critiquing Ludo narrative dissonance in a fighting game story mode. Ah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Aria, since we don't we haven't seen much of her on the videos I put up on the channel for these, like, 13 now. I've probably played against two or three Arias online in those videos. And not that many more, uh, just on my own personal time. Arya is not a super commonly played character online. Though she has been picked up a little bit more since, uh, Sleep started showing off his Arya tech. Uh, her whole deal is that she has three different bodies that she can switch between, and she can call the other two out as drones. While they're um, attacking in their kind of drone phase, they can be hit. So you can kind of get a happy birthday on her. And I believe her instinct allows all of them to be active at once, even if you've destroyed a body. And if she doesn't switch back to that weakened body, the one that still has a magic pixel, it's going to be hard to get an ultra on her. It's the same thing that happened the first time I went through story mode. You get these little bonus objectives. Um, one is to to land a vengeance counter on every character in the story mode. I can't remember what the other is. And the last bonus objective is to ultra combo, combo Aria. And I didn't get to because she died immediately to some chip damage or something. Because she did this. She had a little magic pixel left on the last body. Oh, she is she gonna actually get to my uh, second life bar? Uh, since she essentially is three life bars as opposed to most characters, two, her uh, individual bodies have a lot less health overall. And that is that. Let's see our ending. As Arya falls, Hisako feels her home call to her. Hisako's spirit may never die, though for now, it can rest. But unknown to Hisako, Arya is not simply some machine that can be broken and tossed aside. Her intelligence is stored in the Pinnacle's servers, her body's just expendable shells. And even though the spirit escaped her, Arya has learned a valuable lesson. The will of a few will perpetrate the lie that humanity is strong. If the world is to accept her vision of a better human race, they must truly understand that they are inferior. Only then will they accept progress. All Arya needs is a common enemy powerful enough to unify humanity under her order. I actually wish you could play these credit fights out yourself, kind of like a Platinum or Clover style credits. There's gameplay during the credit. No, this is just uh, pre-baked stuff. So there you go, it's a little bit Spartan as most arcade mode style fighting game stories go, but we have our Hisako backstory and a bit of cool motivation for Season 2 Final Boss Arya. So Hisako means long-lived child, and she's a Japanese ghost girl known as an Onryo, meaning vengeful spirit. That's why her Rekka, which I normally call ORZ, 
is the Onryo Zan, or Vengeful Spirit Slash. And all of her themes, lyrics, the Village of Whispers theme, talk about an endless grudge and a bloody rage and the slaughter of her village. So maybe all that stuff makes a little bit more sense now. Holy shit! That can't be the same person. I saw Greg Fields come up. Uh, there's a there used to be a well-known American StarCraft player went by that name, or, uh, rather went by the name Idra, named Greg Fields. Couldn't possibly be that. No, there's no reason why that would be the same person. Hey, Dave Lang. Oh, are they gonna do all the different seasons credits individually? Because Iron Galaxy did all of season two and three. They brought in a new composer, I'm guessing a bunch of new programmers and some other folks for season three. Uh, Mick Gordon did the music for season one and two. And then Iron, Gal um, Iron Galaxy, as far as I know, had nothing to do with season one. Uh, that was all double helix. Hey, Keats and Javeli. Keats is a cool dude. I got to talk to him a couple times, mainly about how much I fucking love this game. And uh, especially Counterbreakers. Had a long conversation with him about Counterbreaking. But yeah, there are some specific credits I want to get to. Hopefully now that we're getting into music composition? If not, I'll just go silent for a little bit. Because I have a lot to say about this one particular song.
Oh, here it is. Here it is. These credits. Okay, these are all just for Spinal's theme, Warlord. 20 people across five countries recorded this track over a period of three months. And the choir part of this is all done in Swedish. And there's this one instrument in particular in um in the in the composition of the song, and it's a flute made out of a human leg bone. This song is super cool. The effort and the artistry are not only super impressive, the song itself is terrific. I play this song on stream all the time. Again, that's Spinal's theme. It's my favorite song on the entire soundtrack for the game. It's also really badass if you ever look at the translated lyrics for it. Uh, maybe we'll get into that if I ever do Spinal's story. But yeah, these credits keep going for quite a while. Uh, for such a short, short thing, these credits are quite long. There was a, there was a lot of people that worked on this over the course of three seasons. But I appreciate all of their work, so I'm going to keep the credits rolling and just say for now, thanks for watching, everyone. Take it easy. Have a good one. And if you enjoy this, maybe I'll do some more stuff like it in the future. Uh, but the next many, many Killer Instinct videos I put up, we'll be going back to uh, the usual, learning some new characters, doing some more random select, and just trying to uh, dial in and improve on my Hisako and uh, my Saber Wolf play. So I will see you guys later on.